So we have looked at um, derivatives, the second derivative and third derivative, just briefly before. And for example, we we mentioned kind of in passing that while if um, our function is giving us a position, then the derivative is the rate of change, so that would be our velocity. But then we mentioned that the second derivative would be the rate of change of the velocity. So what do we call it when our velocity is changing? Um, yeah, acceleration. We could have a positive acceleration where our, vo our velocity is going... Is, is increasing, or we could have a negative acceleration where our velocity is decreasing, okay? Um, now, the notation I'll remind you of here, we have um, a couple of different ways, like we did with the original derivatives. We could use dy dx, y prime, or f prime of x as our notation. Well, here, we could use, we're taking the derivative of dy dx, so we could have this notation here, d squared y dx squared. Or we can use y double prime, is how we could say that. Or we could say f double prime of x. And that represents our second derivative. And we actually could keep taking derivatives as often, as much as we wanted. If we wanted to take a third derivative or a fourth derivative or a fifth derivative, we could. Okay? We're specifically today going to be looking at taking the second derivative and determining what we can about the function from that second derivative. Okay? So just for, you know, an example here... If I have the function f of x is 5x cubed plus 7x squared minus 5x minus 7, we take the derivative, 15x squared plus 14x minus 5. So you'll notice, and this is going to happen anytime you have polynomial functions, we started with a cubic and the derivative is a quadratic. Okay? So if I take the derivative again, what am I ending up with? Um, 30x plus 14. And that is a line, right? If I wanted to keep going to the third derivative of x, and notice we typically will put the little 3 in parentheses. That's not an exponent, so that's why we put it in parentheses, so you could understand it's not cubing it. That's the third derivative. What would that equal? 30. And if I wanted the fourth derivative, it would be 0. And what would the hundredth derivative be now? Yeah. Zero. Once we hit zero with the polynomials, all the rest of them are going to be zero. Okay. Now, polynomials are nice. They get simpler the more you take the derivative. Trig functions, things like that, typically get a little bit more complex the more you take the derivative. But um, we'll do a mixture. But the nice thing is, for our applications here, really, and for most applications, the second derivative is the last one that's really useful, okay, um, because it's dealing with acceleration, all right? <clears throat> now, here's an example of one with the trig, finding the second derivative for y equals tangent of x cubed. So will give us some good review of our derivatives of trig functions. So to get the second derivative, we need the first derivative. So what is the derivative of the tangent of x cubed? Um, okay. so you secant squared. squared. Yeah. Secant squared. 
of what? X cubed. That stays the same. Tangent's the outer function. So the derivative of tangent is secant squared. The inside stays the same. But how do I handle the x cubed now? I multiply by a 3x squared. Okay? We're using the chain rule here. Now, I told you that with the trig functions, the more we take the derivative, typically the more complex it ends up getting. So when I take the derivative of this, what am I actually going to have to use to find the derivative? Product rule. Yeah, product rule. So... There's my u and v. u prime is 6x. v prime, we got to do secant squared of x cubed. So we got a double chain here. So there's three functions going on. What's the outermost function? The squared. The squared. So the derivative of something squared is 2 something to the first. Then the next innermost function would be secant. What's the derivative of secant? You guys remember? This wasn't one you necessarily had to memorize, but uh, derivative of secant was secant times tangent. Okay, so secant of x cubed times tangent of x cubed. Now we're all the way to the inside. We've got the x cubed there. <coughs> so we've got to multiply by the derivative of that times 3x squared. Okay? So we simplify a little bit here. V prime is 3, not 3, 6x squared secant squared x cubed times tangent of x cubed. Okay, so there's our V prime. Now we get to use the, the product rule. Okay. So, product rule is U prime times V, V is secant squared X cubed, plus U 3x squared times v prime, 6x squared, secant squared of x cubed times tangent of x cubed. I'm running in there. Okay. And now... That's all we were asked to do. We can simplify this a little bit using common factors. Um, I recognize there's a 6x and a secant squared. Here's a 6x and a secant squared. I can pull those out. The second one is a 6x squared. I'm only going to pull out a 6x though. So I'll pull out a 6x secant squared x cubed times 1 plus, there's the 3x squared and the other x, so that's going to be a 3x cubed tangent of x cubed. Okay, and that's a little bit simpler than the original answer was a little more condensed. 
Okay? So we take the derivative. Be real careful if you're not dealing with the polynomial. When you take the derivative, the when you take the derivative the second time, you might end up with something that you've got to use one of your other rules for. Product rule, co quotient rule. Okay? Any questions on that? Is that pretty clear? Might be a little bit rusty on the on the uh, derivatives themselves, but these are good practice for us. Okay. So let's talk about concavity. All right. Concavity. Um, you may have heard of things being concave. Maybe in science class you studied mirrors or lenses and they were concave or convex. Um, they were either arced in or bulging out. Okay, concave or convex. Um, concavity, we're considering um, like it's con uh, concave, not convex, but concave, but we look at whether it's concave downward or upward. Okay, now, <clears throat> you can see here that in the picture, we have um, this idea where it's arching downward for concave down or arching upward, kind of like a U for concave up. And understand, though, that when you see this, you may not see all of this it may not completely reach a max and arch back down. And, but it can still be concave downward. For example, if I have a logarithmic function like this, it's arching downward, okay? Even though I only have part of that arch, it still would be concave down, all right? Um, or if I had like an exponential decay function, looked like that. That's actually concave up, and you say, well, it never loops up again. You're right, but it still is concave up, all right? The key here is to look at our second derivative. If the second derivative is negative, then it's concave down. If the second derivative is positive, then it's concave up, all right? Now, I want you to relate this to our first derivative, okay? So if f double prime is negative, That means the first derivative is what? What do you think is happening here? Remember, this is the derivative of the derivative. When we had the derivative negative, we said the original function was... No, when the derivative was negative, the original function was decreasing. Right? So, remember our sine diagrams for f prime. If we had, you know, negative, positive, whoop, negative, positive, negative, it's decreasing, increasing, decreasing, right? On the function. Well, if I'm looking at the second derivative, I actually can tell something about the first derivative and the original function, okay? So let's say I have some values here on a sine diagram, and we'll do some of these in a little bit. 
but let's say the second derivative was positive, then negative, then positive. That means my first derivative was increasing, then decreasing, then increasing. It means my original function was concave up, concave down, and then concave up again. Okay? So when the second derivative is negative, the first derivative is decreasing. If the second derivative is positive, then my first derivative is increasing. So notice I'm relating this back to um, not just the original function. When we say the shape, let me do that better, the shape, we're talking about f of x, the original function. Okay? However, we can also tell some things about the first derivative from the second derivative, okay? Any questions about this so far? Okay. Now, just to kind of reiterate this a little bit, f prime of x is the rate of change of the position, okay? We said f prime was the velocity, i.e. rate of change in our position. However, the second derivative is the rate of change of the velocity, okay? And we already mentioned that the term there is acceleration, okay? Now, notice here, this is concave downward, okay? So we already know that F double prime is what here? Negative. negative, okay? It's negative. But another reason why that's happening, just kind of similar to what we were saying on the previous slide here, is that look at the derivative at different values as we go from left to right the slope of the tangent line is 2 then 1 then 0 then negative 1 then negative 2 so our derivative is decreasing okay the derivative is decreasing so our second derivative is negative okay Okay, now another thing here with concave upwards, look at our derivative again. The slopes of these tangent lines are doing what as we go left to right? They're increasing, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and so on. They're increasing... So f double prime of x is positive. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay. Now, one other thing. Sometimes it's hard to tell by looking whether something is concave up or concave down. Um... What do you notice about where all the tangent lines are on the one that's concave down? Mm 
all the tangent lines are where related to the, the function itself. All the tangent lines, they're not inside, right? Okay, they wouldn't be inside or they'll say wouldn't be tangent. But also, notice they're all on top of the curve. If the tangent lines are on top, then you have concave down. Over here, the function was on top. All the tangent lines are below the function. So that, um, that means it's concave up. All right, so think about where the function is in relation to the tangent lines. Here the function is below the tangent lines, it's concave down. Here the function is above the tangent lines, so it's concave up. All right, and you can actually see in different functions, let's say you have something like this, you're going to see that, hey, if I'm drawing the tangent lines here, at some point, it's going to have to switch to the bottom side, which means what must have happened with my, my concavity at some point? Over here on the left, I'm concave down. Over here, I'm concave up. So somewhere in here, it changes concavity. What do you think is going to happen with my second derivative at that point? Also changes. The second derivative changes signs, right? Yeah. So that means at the exact point where that happens, the second derivative must equal zero. Zero. It's going to equal zero. Okay. So check this out here. Let me switch colors here. Um, Okay, so here, f double prime is negative. Over here, f double prime is positive. Right here, f double prime equals zero. It's just, it's just because of the shape. That's just how it works with the shape here. That curvature. When we're talking about concavity, we're talking about the curvature of the graph. If it's concave down, the curvature is trying to go down. All right? So if I'm going to do tangent, think about it. If I have something that's just slightly curved down and I want to only hit it in one spot, if you look at this, that might help understand that a little better. If I tried to make the tangent line be on the, on the inside, I'm going to always have a secant because that curvature is, is aiming that way. So to make a tangent line, I'm going to have to put it on this side. All right, so that point that we just mentioned, the point we just mentioned is called a point of concavity, or a point of inflection, okay? A point of inflection. It's a point on the curve where we change concavity or change curvature from concave up to concave down or concave down to concave up. And we, we will find these simply by setting the second derivative equal to zero and solving. Just like we found max and min points, 
and plateau points by taking the first derivative and setting it equal to zero. Here we're setting the second derivative equal to zero and figuring out where the points of inflection are. Okay? Now, with these, we do also still want to double check to make sure that um, it actually does change inflection. So what, are, what tool could we use to, um, to be able to see the change in sign? <laughs> we could use a calculator. How did we tell whether it was a max or a min or a plateau point? Oh, the, the sign diagram. The sign diagram. Okay. Here there's only one thing. There's, it's called a point of inflection. But if you do the sign diagram, you should see that change in sign from positive to negative. It is possible that you could have a... Um, <coughs> possible that you could have a point where the second derivative equals zero but there is no change just like you had plateau points where there was no change in the increasing or decreasing but um, we're not going to run into those a whole lot in this class if you go on to AP calculus or something you'll run into cases like that more or if you do calculus in college Okay, so there's a couple of practice ones, nothing uh, super. It's really, take your time with them. And notice here, they're trying to have you find the x's when the second derivative is zero for these two functions. But one thing I think will be really, really um, valuable, especially, is this problem here, number six. So as I give you guys the last bit of time here to work on these problems, and for this one, they've given you a function, and you're essentially, you're, it's not exactly a sign diagram because we didn't necessarily solve it for zero, but you are looking at the signs at the different points. And what I want you to do is I want you to actually describe in words Okay, where are we? Okay, so the function itself tells us, are you above or below the x-axis? F prime tells you whether you are increasing or decreasing. And the second derivative tells us whether we are concave up or down. So do that sign, do those signs, and then for each um, value, I want you to tell all three of these things. Okay? And that'll help you start to interpret these a little bit, okay? So again, F tells us whether you're above or below. F prime tells us whether it's increasing or decreasing. F double prime tells us whether it's concave up or down, okay?